Hello there Science Kids! Welcome sa ating new episode ng Grade for Science Learning Activities. Stay present if you're watching this video for me to know if you are here with me as I discuss this new science concept with you. Special shout out to Tagumpay Navarro and Flaming Mantis as well as to my pupils, parents, and co-teachers who are watching my lesson videos. Handa na ba kayo para sa ating panibagong aralin sa episode na ito? My name is Teacher Lariza at narito na ang ating new episode para sa Grade 4 Science. In our last science episode, you learned about the different stages in the life cycle of an organism, particularly the egg-laying animals and humans. In that episode, you also learned about the three basic parts of an egg which include its shell, albumin, and yolk. These parts are important in the development of the birds. You also learned about amphibians, the group of animals that begin their life cycle on water environment and eventually spend the rest of their lives on land like frogs. Lastly, you also learned about the different stages of development that humans undergo before and after birth. For a quick review, can you identify which of these stages belong to bird, amphibians, and humans? Comment down your answers below this video. Now that you know the different stages of development in the life cycle of an organism, we can now move forward to our next science episode which is entitled, The Effect of Environment in the Life Cycle of an Organism. Science Learning Episode, The Effect of the Environment in the Life Cycle of an Organism. The environment plays an important role in the life cycle of organisms. Along their developmental process, organisms interact with non-living materials such as water, air, and soil as primary components of their habitat. As organisms grow, it is expected that they socialize with other organisms which could be their means of food. Kaya naman, importante ang ating kapaligiran sa ating paglaki at pagtugon sa ating mga gampanin base na rin sa kung anong uri ng organismo tayo nabibilang. But before heading to our today's topic, let us first define the different terminologies that you need in understanding the science concept. Number one is ecology. Ecology is a branch of science that deals with the study on the many relationships and interactions of living things with one another and with their environment. In Tagalog, ang ecology ay isang sangay ng siyensya na may kinalaman sa pag-aaral sa mga relasyon, koneksyon at interaksyon ng mga nilalang na may buhay sa pagitan nila at sa kanilang environment. Ang mga interaksyon na ito sa pagitan ng mga living thing at ng kanilang kapaligiran ay may kinalaman sa kanilang pamumuhay sa tinatawag nating ecosystem. To understand our world better, ecologists classify the natural world into three main levels. These are populations, communities, and ecosystems. Ecologists are a group of people who study about the interactions of living things and their environment. Next is population. Population is the group of the same kind of living things that live in one area called habitat at a given time. In Tagalog, ang populasyon ay isang grupo ng mga nilalang na may buhay na kabilang sa isang uri at naninirahan sa isang lugar sa isang tiyak na panahon. Next is community. Community is a group of animal and plant populations living together in the same environment. In Tagalog, ang komunidad ay isang grupo ng mga hayop at ng mga halaman na naninirahan sa iisang lugar. Next is ecosystem. Ecosystem is the largest and the most complex level of organization as it is composed of all plants, animals, and microorganisms which function with all the environmental factors including sunlight, climate, soil, water, air, nutrients, and energy. In Tagalog, ang ecosystem ay ang pinakamalaki at pinakakomplikadong antas ng organisasyon sapagkat ito ay binubuo ng lahat ng halaman, hayop at maliliit na organismo na kumikilos kasama ng mga salik ng kapaligiran tulad ng sinag ng araw, klima, lupa, tubig, hangin, nutrisyon at ng enerhiya. There are six elements that keep our ecosystem going. These are the sun, producers, abiotic factors, 
primary consumers, secondary consumers, and decomposers. Abiotic factors are those things without life. They are also called as non-living things. In Tagalog, ang abiotic factors ay mga salik ng ating kapaligiran na walang buhay. Ito ay kinabibilangan ng sun, water, air, and soil. Next is biotic factors. Biotic factors are those things with life. They are also called as the living things. In Tagalog, ang biotic factors ay mga nilalang na may buhay. Ilan sa mga halimbawa nito ay ang plants and animals. Next is producers. Producers consist mainly of green plants such as trees and grasses. They can make their own food through the process of photosynthesis. Next, we have primary consumers. Primary consumers are a group of animals that eat on plants. They are also called as herbivores. Ang primary consumers ay binubuo ng mga hayop na kumakain ng mga halaman. Next is secondary consumers. Secondary consumers consist of animals that eat on other animals. So, ito namang secondary consumers ay binubuo ng mga hayop na kumakain ng kanilang kapwa hayop o ng karne. Lastly, we have decomposers. Decomposers break down dead plants and animals and turn it into nutrients. In Tagalog, ang decomposers ay binubuo ng mga organismo na tumutunaw o kumakain ng mga patay na hayop o halaman na ginagawa nilang pataba o nutrisyon sa lupa. These components naturally connect to one another to sustain life in the ecosystem. Food is essential to every living organism to carry out life processes and important interactions. Organisms may interact with other organisms in many beneficial ways. However, there are some interactions that causes harm to other organisms. The environment where the organism live is important for their survival. This can be their source of food that they can depend on in their daily living. Tulad natin, kailangan natin ng tubig at pagkain upang tayo ay mabuhay na makukuha naman natin sa ating kapaligiran. Kinakailangan din natin ng ating damit at tirahan na dito rin natin matatagpuan. Paano nga ba nagkakaroon ng interaction sa ating kapaligiran? The sun provides the energy needed to make food. The plants or producers uses the light energy coming from the sun to make food in the process of photosynthesis. Ang mga halaman naman na ito ay magsisilbing pagkain para sa mga primary consumers o mga hayop na kumakain ng mga halaman. Sumunod naman dito ay ang mga secondary consumers na kumukonsumo sa karne ng iba pang hayop. Ang mga halaman at mga hayop na ito kapag sila ay namatay ay kakainin naman ng mga decomposers at tutunawin sila upang maging pataba sa lupa. Ang mga nutrients na ito ay gagamitin naman ng mga halaman sa tulong ng light energy upang gumawa ulit ng food sa proseso ng photosynthesis. Ang interaction na ito sa ating kapaligiran ay paulit-ulit na mangyayari. Ngayon naman ay subukin mong sagutan ng ating unang gawain. Iguhit mo ang mga sumusunod na hayop gamit ang mga larawang ito bilang iyong gabay. Pagdugtong-dugtongin mo ang bawat larawan base sa kung ano ang kanilang kinakain at kung ano ang kumakain sa kanila upang maipakita ang interaksyong nagaganap sa ating kapaligiran. Sagutin natin ang mga gabay na tanong. Una, anong mangyayari sa mga organism kung wala ang araw? Pangalawa, ano ang epekto ng halaman sa buhay ng mga organismo sa ating kapaligiran? Gamit ang mga larawan sa unang gawain, tukuyin mo kung alin sa mga ito ang primary source of energy, producer, primary consumer at secondary consumer. Tukuyin mo rin ang elemento ng ecosystem na kumakain sa mga patay na organismo upang gawing pataba sa lupa. Isulat mo ang iyong sagot sa iyong kwaderno. Para sa ating ikatlong gawain, gumawa ka ng dalawang pangungusap bilang iyong refleksyon sa epekto ng mga halaman sa buhay ng mga hayop at sa kanilang life cycle. Isulat mo ito sa pamamagitan ng gabay sa ibaba. Dagdag kaalaman 
Ang tawag sa isang sangay na nagkokonekta mula sa producer hanggang sa decomposer ay tinatawag na food chain. Ito ay ang simpleng estruktura ng interaksyon ng mga organismo sa ating kapaligiran at isang sangay ng tinatawag na food web. Ang food web naman ay ang mas komplikado at sangasangang transfer of energy mula sa producers hanggang sa decomposers. That's it, Science Kids! I hope you learned something new in our science episode for today. If you like this video, do not forget to hit like and subscribe in our channel and ring the notification bell for you to be updated in our upcoming videos. You can also follow me on my different social media accounts for more updates. See you again next week! Bye!